Hello and welcome to the second episode of the ABCs of TPBs. The ABCs being, you know, the 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 alpha alphabetic uh, uh, chronology, and then the TPBs being the trade paperbacks. Mm -hmm. We're discussing uh, in this this comic book series uh, from A to Z, and then possibly numbers. Um, uh, two books that we've selected from each letter, and we're just gonna hash it out. Hash it out. Old school WWE Raw is war, uh, whatever style. The question <laughs> is, when we get to Z, do you do it like a snake draft? Do we go A to Z and then Z to A? We might or have do we to. Do, yeah, we got to keep these listeners on the toes. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not going to know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Hell, and we don't know what the fuck is going on. Well, I'm I'm your host for this episode. This is Ninja Dave, and I'm joined by the illustrious C Delicious. Yeah, that's right. C Delicious is in the house. I'll be the co-host. Of uh, this particular episode, and I can't wait to dig into these bad boys, man. We're gonna have a good time tonight. We have uh, up on the uh, chopping block tonight. Uh, we're in the bees, so I've got Batman versus Predator. Yes, you know, it was a Batman book was coming, um, and I had to go a little. I had to go a little left page with it. So I, I have Batman versus Predator, the collected edition, mm -hmm. uh, written by Dave Gibbons. Uh, I got Andy Kubert and Adam Kubert working on this thing. Uh, very nice, uh, very nice stuff going on here. Uh, and then also, uh, Daryl has his pick, Black Widow. Yes, the finely woven thread. Finely woven thread. We got I mean, we have we have a lot of head head stuff going on tonight. We're gonna we're gonna do a, like a matchup later too. But uh, uh, of note, I've got a DC book. He's got a Marvel book. Mm. So you know, I don't know. We're we're choosing sides here. Uh, I guess it's gonna have to be Marvel versus DC in this bad boy. Man, we're taking it back to the nineties, all, all the way back, back to all the way back to the nineties. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Bats of the 90s, mm -hmm. wasn't Batman vs. Predator a 90s uh, publication? Uh, I believe it was. Let's see here. Let's take a look here. DC Comics. So you would have to ask the tough questions, wouldn't you? <laughs> Let's it see. When is it? might go to the next page. Maybe the next page. Maybe the oh, page. Oh, this is August oh, 1992. Forwards is written in 1992, so I'm assuming this. Oh, it's got to be back. Up. It's got to be maybe the maybe the back. No, not the back. Maybe no, that's, that's all. All maybe the covers there. I, I think. At. I think it's 1992, man. I think okay. it's 92. Man, before Wu-Tang's first album ever came oh, out. Really? It was 93. 93? Was yeah. that first? It can't have been. It can have been because it, it was. It was? Well, wow. my goodness. Yeah, it doesn't have a. I didn't have the date on this. Uh, this is. This lets you know how old these books are. They don't even <laughs> yeah, adhere to the standards. Yeah. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> this is actually a comic book uh, drawn on papyrus. Right. Like I mean, you, if you smell the pages. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's it, it's, time. The, it's yeah. It's the it's the original. I mean, they don't even make comics like this anymore, man. When they say a tale as old as time, they're talking about Batman vs. Predator. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Beauty versus the Beast in this one. Yeah, you know what? Boom. Beauty versus the Beast. So you've seen the uh, the Predator movies, right? All I saw the... No. I right. saw the first Predator quite some time ago. Never mm -hmm. saw it after that. So I've only really? seen the first Predator once. Really? Uh, people would kill me if they found out that information. Well, Never well, saw the man. second Predator or... Any of the other ones after oh that. So goodness. all I've ever seen is the first Predator. So what was it about the first Predator that you remember, and then what turned you off about it? Uh, I wouldn't say anything <clears throat> turned me off about it. It's just one of those I was like, all right, eighties action adventure movie, and then I just went on with the you know the rest of my my movie education, and I just never went back to it. So it's not that I'm like reticent to watch anything else. I I just there's other things that I would rather watch. Then watch like Alien vs. Predator or, you know. Well, Predators, you can, you can skip you can skip Alien vs. Predator. That was garbage. That was hot garbage. Um, <laughs> what but, I remember but, about but, the first one um, is, you know, it's the standard stuff. It's the get to the chopper. It's the mm -hmm. having get to cover yourself in mud to camouflage because he's uh, these tracks by heat, mm -hmm. I do believe. And, you know, just the fact that he's dropped on this earth uh, to hunt, mm -hmm. you know, the end. And I think there is like a Vietnamese woman that got clapped up in there somewhere. Uh, it sounds like it those. sounds like you might need to to watch it again. I have it on DVD, DVD, not Blu-ray, <laughs> no less. <laughs> if you want to take it with you tonight, you know what? Uh, speaking of DVDs and Blu-rays, mm -hmm. I have a firm firm belief that if it did not come before or if it did not come after 2007, uh -huh. I will not watch it on Blu-ray because what? It, 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 you know, it, it wasn't meant to be in that. You in know that what format. Total Recall on Blu-ray looks like. Total Recall on DVD, and I wasted thirty five effing dollars <laughs> <laughs> when I bought that. That's that true. That's true. Well, you know, let's get into this uh, Batman versus Predator. Work. Um, as I said before, Dave Gibbons is the writer, Andy Kubert penciler, Adam Kubert inker and letterer. We've got Sherilyn Von Valkenberg as a color artist. Mm. Dave Gibbons, uh, the collection cover artist. We've got a, a bunch of editors here as well: Diane Schultz, Dennis O'Neill. 
uh, Kidge Johnson, Bob Kahan, uh, and the collection designs by uh, Brian Gogolin. Uh, Batman also created by Bob Kane. I like that they were actually they were added that because there was a point of contention. And it was for Bob a while. Kane and uh, Bill Finger too. Wasn't it? Yep, they didn't have they didn't have finger in this one. Didn't have didn't finger not. in this one. I noticed mm-hmm. at the beginning of Black Panther mm-hmm. that it just doesn't say created by Stanley. It says created by Stanley and Jack Kirby. You bastard! I, you yeah. saw you saw Black Panther before the rest of us. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna let you time, live it down. By the time this drops, everybody will have seen it anyway. <laughs> uh, right. But I can't remember any, any other Marvel movies also crediting Jack Kirby. I think mm. uh, Thor Maybe Ragnarok the, did. Was but. it the uh, Sam Raimi's uh, Spider Man? Did they have? I can't remember. I, I, I honestly meant to go back earlier today and just like look at the opening title sequences for Marvel movies. But okay, you've been busy. I understand. Been busy. <clears throat> Let's so, get into this business. Yeah. So we've got all those creators on this book. <clears throat> and this one, this book actually was released as a series of, mm-hmm. uh, of individuals. So I mean, that, that's typically how they a standard trade paperback trade paperback format. Um, you you get all the singles, and then people are like, "Hey, we we, we missed the singles. We want to get the whole story collected. Let's put it out in this trade paperback oh, format." Trade. In the '90s, that was kind of I don't know. I wouldn't say it was kind of new, but it was it really started yeah. gaining steam back then. Yeah, it didn't really start <clears throat> popping like. The standard until I would say like the early two thousands mm-hmm. maybe yeah early to mid two thousands I think is when when the trade really started popping off but yeah. but God bless whoever thought of that joint it's just it's just easy it has it has all the stuff you don't have to go searching for it, it has all the stuff in there uh, and it has the extra artwork as well I live and die by the trade yeah. it doesn't have back <clears throat> matter that's my only my that's only true. contention that is true uh, so anyway with this with this story I just kind of give you a broad overview. Uh, if any of you guys have ever heard or read or seen anything Predator related, you've got the Predator, uh, an extraterrestrial uh, that's a society that lives off of the hunt. Uh, mm-hmm. They have mm-hmm. advanced technology. <clears throat> they go to different worlds and they look for the best challenge of their hunting skills. They okay. employ a variety of weapons. Most notable, their camouflage, which makes them yeah. essentially undetectable, makes them invisible. Incredibly unfair. Um, incredibly unfair. But you know, you got the you're up there in the duck blind, you're shooting down, you're just gunning down on these guys. I mean, it's it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, kind of okay. the same thing. It's Fair. invisible. I'm just capped by this invisible foe. <clears throat> so, yes. So we're introduced here. We we have we start off with a, a bit of a, um, a kind of an allegory. There's a there's an actual boxing match going on uh, between two of Gotham's finest boxers. Um, it's an allegory of, uh, of 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 the fight, and then we we just kind of interspersed with that, we see uh, the predator actually marking his first prey, mm-hmm. who actually happens to be listening to the fight over the radio. Yes, yes, good yes. good transition there. That was um, a great transition. As the book goes on, you know, we 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 are exposed to the predator itself. We get to see Batman on the case, mostly mostly as a detective. Yes, um, that's kind of a kind of a thing that's kind of lost in some of the more recent uh, issues. Of, of Batman and movies yeah, and, and movies uh, the detective aspect um, but we get to see these guys face off over the course of this book um, let me ask you this <clears throat> how did you feel when you first read this what did you think about the artwork oh man it is dated dated is the best word for it uh huh <clears throat> um incredibly dated there are I mean the artwork is it's decent it's mm-hmm. it's it's Andy Cooper right yep um, Andy, Andy Cooper's been in the game for a long time. I've seen his name all over, all over everything. Or yeah, Andy. Yeah, I've Andy. seen his name over all sorts of stuff, mostly DC related. I think about it. I don't know if he's DC only, or that's just where I've seen his name at the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, the art is what it was at that time. You know, sure. we we've progressed and evolved <clears throat> in in art. Now we, you know, relay from the artist to the to the reader's hands and progressed. They just art styles have progressed since. Well, let me ask you this: Do you think that? I mean, we, obviously, we have a, a different grade of paper now that we're using. Mm-hmm, you can mm-hmm. get a lot more uh, detail and a lot more, I guess, granularity and out of it. Do you think that the artwork that was used at this time was fit more for the uh, for the style? Uh, I guess the medium of that type of page, or did it just over time evolve? And, and just is it better suited for this new grade of paper? I think over time it evolved. <clears throat> uh, I mean, paper is definitely an issue that that you know that helps. Now, mm-hmm. Yours is what ninety something. Mine is I think two thousand and twelve. Right. So there's a hell of a difference. In there's paper a hell of a in, difference between this one and the Black Widow. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the only thing that, about the art that I did not like in this is 
uh, there's a lot of uh, in film terms extreme close-ups, oh, like okay. a panel that will feature an extreme close-up on something, like this one. Like this. Uh, one. I mean, there's times it's even close-up close on than two that. of those guys. Or yeah, yeah. And there's times of those extreme close-ups <clears throat> are a little bit jarring and confusing. Right. I'm still not sure in some of these panels what exactly is happening. All right. Uh, that was my my main beef, and I was like, I don't even know what's trying to be conveyed in this panel. Mm. But other than that, you know, it's 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 Cooper does what Cooper does. Yeah, he, he's a good artist. I will say that, like I said, the shading they employed here, the, like the, the kind of the, the natural body movements, some of those things, even like even with uh, with Batman posed here where Predator is is uh, above him, uh, it's, it's just kind of the twisting of limbs and whatnot it looks a little bit almost unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, it's yeah, yeah. it kind of suits the 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 page. Yeah, it looks um, like his his <laughs> body is twisting one way while his arms are. Uh, akimbo as if his body should be twisting out of the way like mm-hmm. this should be flipped a little bit right mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. but hey but then again I know a lot, of, a lot of professional artists have to take many many anatomy classes mm-hmm. to, to get this stuff right so maybe it just looks weird to me maybe I'm completely wrong on that one but I will say that I grew up on stuff like this and so like to, like I'm like right at home with the, the shading styles the, the storytelling elements the, the, the close the close the close ups that don't seem like they 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 kind of make sense. Yeah. But yeah, it's just um <clears throat> just visually it, it told a pretty interesting story to me. What did you think about the pacing with this? Cuz cuz with this one this this very different. It, we don't just get down right into the knockdown drag out fight between Yeah. And Rush yeah, yeah you, there's there's a lot of subtext there. They draw it out. They put uh you know for for it being a just this versus that. They 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 take time to to make a backstory which mm-hmm. Really, in the end, has nothing to do with that. <laughs> right. it, uh, it's kind of an excuse to get it's, these. It's kind of an excuse to get them together. And right. you know, like, I do like the uh, the fact that um, we have these two boxers that are backed by rival Gotham gangs, mm-hmm. and that's how they settle their beef. Instead okay. of all that war in the streets, mm-hmm. uh, it's my champion versus your champion. Mm-hmm. That was pretty damn cool to see. That was pretty dope. Yeah, um, this is a sophisticated game. It is. It's a, it's a sophisticated game. sophisticated yeah. game. Why? Why do I have beef? We, we don't need beef. <laughs> yeah, I'll just put my person up against your person. Whoever, whichever boxer comes out victorious, you know, I'll take your turf or whatever the case may be, or mm-hmm. I'll run these streets. Um, that. I actually found more interesting than I found the Batman for Superman business. Really? Yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's a concept I you just don't really see anybody do. If it's if it's you know two factions going at it, usually it's going to be all out war in the streets, and then Batman's got to calm all that shit down, or whatever the case may be. Um, this was <clears> that. <throat> once, once, once it got to the the Batman versus Predator business, I was like, ah, all right, I mean that's what we're here for, mm-hmm. you know. So let's let's get on with this. There's there's the I think there's what two two bouts between these two dudes. There's yep. there's the one that just kind of kind of tests each other, and and yeah. that that leaves bats a little bit worse for the wear. And then you yeah. know he comes back and and you know does what he does, much like the Dark Knight Returns kind of. Right, thing. he suits up. He, he plays it smart. Uh, <clears throat> people always people are are very proud of the of the argument that of if Batman has enough time, enough to prep prepare, time, yeah. he can do he can do anything. Yeah. Well, in this book, on several occasions. Batman gets his ass handed to him. <laughs> yeah, and I think sure. that's one thing I loved about this this book because it, it made Batman more human and more realistic than I think many contemporary uh, interpretations of him are. I mean, yeah, yes, you can prepare for stuff, mm-hmm. but <clears throat> in a real fight between Superman and Batman, Batman and, and, and if Batman if, if Superman is being serious and if he's lethal or what have you, Batman doesn't stand a chance. Doesn't stand a chance. And, and, and that's 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 portrayed here perfectly because the Predator is like twice his size. Mm-hmm. He's got he's got a, a decent amount of, of kit. He's got you know he's got the blades. He's got the throwing the uh, uh, the throwing um, scythe. Yeah. Uh, he's got his he's got his laser gun. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> Batman has has his normal tr- uh, tricks of the trade as well. But the Predator is just a hardy. Yeah. Beefy dude, you know. Uh, Batman was outclassed. He was outclassed. Fight. But uh, would you say it is, such savagery? There, there is some savagery there. Uh, mm-hmm. Would you say it makes him more human? I think it makes him more inhuman mm-hmm. because Batman that first round gets his ass whooped. Yeah, you see him bandaged from head to toe, <laughs> and, and then, then coma for like a week. Yeah, yeah coma <laughs> for like, a, and then he just straight comes out of it, and he's like, "Well, gotta suit up again and go take this dude out." Like, ah, oh, come on, man. Well, that's see, not how the human body works. Well, Batman, I will, I will say this in defense of Batman. Mm-hmm. 
I will say that Batman has pushed his body to the limits and beyond of what the human can do because he has that madness that's that's pushing him. Mm-hmm, he has mm-hmm. that ambition. It's always the mission. I don't right? think regenerative abilities. Uh, Not regenerative. That's it's strictly will. Strictly, strictly will. Just force of will. Yeah, force of will. Okay. And that enough. reinforced, you know, the aluminum plating for that armor that he was wearing. Uh huh. Because, uh-huh. like I said, he. he he would not have been able to, to stand or nah, dish he, out. He can't go to. He couldn't. This he guy. couldn't. But like I said, it's just like I said. I, I like that it was a more realistic take on, on this. Um, <clears throat> everyone wants Batman to succeed because you know we, we love Batman. Yeah, and he's, he, he's he Batman. could be. He could be one of us if I just worked out a little bit harder at the gym. Only I a little could bit. Be only, only a little a bit. Little just bit. a tad. I'm just that last <laughs> that last rep, and I could be Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, on, on a scale of one to ten, just enjoyability for this this story. I mean, what what, what would you give it? Um, so I remember back in the day, back in Wizard Comics was a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember hearing about this joint in the '90s, and I was just like, eh, "Who cares about Batman versus Predator? Like, nobody right. cares. Right. These two dudes don't belong in the same universe together, let alone mm-hmm. the same room together. Mm-hmm. I don't care about Batman." versus Predator and you're like we're gonna do Batman versus Predator and I was like oh <laughs> you forces me to God. read this like, oh, this, this is, is the first time you read it right yeah because oh. I didn't care <laughs> um, so in a scale of 1 to 10 in the I go no we're not we're doing 1 to 10s we're doing goes or no goes goes or no that's right that's right, yeah, that's right. Goes, no goes, goes. Yeah, goes. Um, I went from I don't care mm-hmm. Uh, and when it comes to Batman versus Predator, I still kind of don't care. Mm-hmm. But damn it, that that whole the whole mobster joint and then how the Predator moved throughout his prey, mm-hmm. I thought was pretty damn dope. Yeah. So I would not read another Batman versus Predator, mm-hmm. but I would be cool if they dropped Batman in other worldly situations. Really? Like you gave me Batman like versus Batman. aliens? Perhaps? No, that's the only one I will not say. <laughs> no, no, because as soon as an alien blood that's, that's tearing up his suit, he's right. done from there. He's done. But if you put me on, if you put him on Batman versus something else, I think I'll be a lot more open to reading it before than I was before reading this. Well, it, it sounds like you were, I mean, the, from what you were just saying, it sounds like you're more apt to reading a Predator versus something book. And it, it would all depend on how Batman was handled, I think. Batman. It would all depend, like, like I said, for me, what did it is the Gotham aspect of all yeah. this, with the gangsters and whatnot. Okay. So something else, like if it was like Batman versus Dracula, if he rolled up in the hood, and like, mm-hmm. oh, well, how the fuck is Batman gonna fight Dracula? Exactly. And, and then totally you know, the, all the, the mobsters jump. trying to manipulate Dracula, is Dracula manipulate the monsters? That is the kind of stuff I would see because I, I love <laughs> Batman and the Gotham element. Gotham yeah. is the better. It, Gotham is the best character in all of Batman to me. Not I Batman. agree. Hey, I'm assuming you've read Gotham Central. Uh, I've read some of Gotham Central. <clears throat> so I'm not read uh, So another Batman vs Predator, probably not. But give yeah. me a Batman vs something else. Yeah. Okay. I find but, it but, but, but this one itself did not did not do it for you. Uh, the only, only, when, only when it became it. just Batman vs Predator, it did not do it for me. Okay. Everything leading up to it, strangely enough, I was like, okay. And then you know, Gordon and his sidekick getting clapped on all that. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I kind of I kind of felt something there for a second. Yeah. I, the old reckless ass woman going out there. The story really shines with that the element, and that's that's really uh, it's it's something else for for you to for just for the reader to to, to acknowledge is like. Yeah, the main reason that they even got together was just kind of kind of silly and over dramatic. But the everything like the backdrop for it, uh, just the, you know, the 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 boxers, the the predator selecting his prey, the, the 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 gangs themselves, that could have been its own book. Yeah, they could have they could have easily replaced the predator with a, a regular serial killer in Gotham. Yeah, and that could have worked. Could have worked just fine. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, so, I find it interesting that Dave Gibbons is an artist. Yeah. Dave Gibbons is the dude who drew Watchmen. Right. A lot of people forget that. Um, so I find it, I always find it interesting when someone who does art transitions over to writing. Like when Scotty mm-hmm. Young started doing I Hate Fairyland. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, what's, a, what's an artist going to do? I mean, like, did they go through the normal pitch process or was Image Comics just like, I mean, we know who you are, Scotty Young. Here, I take your book. <laughs> was it the same way with Dave Gibbons back then? Like, yeah, you did Watchmen. You can do whatever you want to do. Is right. that how we got this? Or is like, you have a fever dream about Ben Spreader? I always kind of wonder how books came to be sometimes mm-hmm. out of the artist get but for I'm not sure that's the first thing you ever wrote um, it would make sense to it a little something out of continuity mm-hmm. but uh, for a for an artist doing a book it was it was good it was good okay. but but your your in your initial final rating on this was would be 
a go or a no go? I don't know, man. It's like I, it's a slow turnaround go is what it is. <laughs> like I'll collect one hundred dollars instead of two hundred dollars. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Then. It would be it would be a a tentative go. A tentative go. Yeah. All right. So you. Uh, I would I would do my go based on who the creative team was. Not not so bad not so Batman not so Predator but you you'd stay for the the gang fights the gang violence. I, I, I'm a big fan of of gang violence. All right. Fair enough. Shout out to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So, but what about you? I mean, what mm-hmm. uh, what do you remember reading this? Uh, before we get into uh, transition over to my business, yeah. Do you remember reading this when it? Did you do issue by issue as it came out? I did issue by issue. I was one of those. Uh, I said at, at the time, I believe I was uh, of the uh, the poorer persuasion. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I read the comics when they came out in like with, I think it's the Eckert drugstore. Eckert, man. Shout out. Uh, shout, shout out, out to, to Eckert. Eckert's. May uh, rest in peace. Shout out to when comic books were in drugstores. <laughs> on spin <laughs> on, 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 on spin yeah. 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 So I read issue by issue, and then when the trade finally came out, I I think I saved up just enough money mm-hmm. where I could actually pick up the actual trade. So that's what I did. And is that this? Is that this copy? And is this copy? So this this, this, this is the copy. original. Yeah. Five dollars ninety five cents, my good sir. For a trade paperback. So it was then young... it came and stood right by me. Walked like a man, but it wasn't. I was ready to die then. But the darnest thing, it spoke. Open season, it said, just that. Open season. I'm glad you I'm glad you pointed mm-hmm. out that quote in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Predators all his communication is just what he had picked up from the T V. Yeah. So it's all just the TV sh- and, other, and other people's quotes and other people's quotes. Yeah. So it's all just him shit talking and other people's <laughs> quotes, which I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah. Do you remember if Young Dave was like, "All right, I'll I'll buy that next issue when I get to it," or were you like, "I got to get that new Batman vs Predator to figure out what happened"? Well, because it was it was released in this in this format, there were I mean each each issue has kind of a cliffhanger to it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and me being the <clears throat> the story nut that I am, I had to. Finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once I read that first one, I was like, I got it. I think, because honestly, I think I read issue two first. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go back and kind of thumb through those spinning racks. I'm like, oh, that issue one is there. There Read that one. Uh, But then I was hooked. Okay. And like I said, when they, when all of them had been released and they came out with the trade, I had to pick it up. Boom. All right. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. I I enjoyed it. Like I said, for the same reason that you liked it. I even liked it because of the, uh, the Batman versus Predator fights because. I love the Predator. I saw. Yeah. I watched the first movie. The second movie wasn't so great. The third movie was um, innovative, <clears throat> and then I think they have a, the, the, the Aliens versus Predator. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they have a new one coming out here too. But I just got pushed back, delayed. Did it? Yeah. Well, that yeah, news that, came that, out today. That, that might be for the best. Yeah, probably yeah, is. Yeah. Anytime you put Key and Michael Key in a Predator movie, uh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna. It doesn't bode well. It doesn't bode well. It doesn't bode well. Doesn't bode well. Um, but yeah, that's um, <clears throat> that's Batman versus Predator. Uh, Find it in your local comic shop if you can. Uh, thumb through it, see what you think. It's, uh, get it's that, an interesting get that experience. Early nineties flavor in there. Yeah, it smells just like the nineties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna go to a quick commercial break, and then uh, we're gonna jump into this Black Widow, the finely woven thread. Mm. C's of the TPBs, man. We're back with the the back half of the B, man. The the second B, is yeah, the second B, the second B. Those uh, bees can't handle it, man. The bees can't handle it. Speaking of the B, man, this is the queen bee. If you the ask queen me, bee. man, the queen oh. bee, Black Widow, man. Mm-hmm. Natasha Romanoff or Natalia Romanoff. 
Depending uh, on, you know, yeah. if you're nasty. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, Natalia, <laughs> if you're nasty. Yeah, Natalia, if you're nasty. I'm going to put that on a shirt. Just, walk <laughs> just, Natalia, just a black willow and then Natalia, <laughs> if you're nasty. Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Finally Roven Thread, Volume 1, written by Nate Edmondson, art by Phil Noto. Now, this is shortly before the whole Secret Wars thing kicked off. So, I think they got maybe 18 total issues out of this before Marvel did their, you know, Inevitable the, reboot. Inevitable reboot. Um, Hack and slash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Clayton Cowles, the, your letter on here. VC's Clayton Cowles, and he's lettered many a thing that I own. Mm. And the editor's Ellie Pyle. Mm. Ah, this is good shit. Um, I actually have a Black Widow commission piece done by Phil Noto, who is one of the grumpiest men I have ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he's not uh, He's not like James O'Barr grumpy, okay. but uh, he's up there. He's up there. Did it cost you an arm and a leg to get this commission piece? No, no. It would maybe like seventy bucks, and it's mm. it was yay big in color. It's mm. it's not bad at all. Really? It, he might be a, a cadre old <laughs> bastard, but he, he charged decently. Right. He's in a good a good mood that day, maybe. Right. maybe Heroes Con. Decent. If you're in the area, that that's your your go to. So, um, <clears throat> it is the story of Black Widow. Uh, I bought this on the Lark because mm. I picked it up, flipped through it. And I was like, this art is a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. And I was like, well, you know what? I don't know anything about the widow. So check it out. Um, this kind of starts off as a as a flavor of the week type deal. Mm -hmm. um, the first three issues are all just her <clears throat> on spy missions and spy stories. What's your what's your thoughts on spy stories? Are you a spy guy? I kind of like spy stories. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in some contemporary models, they're not handled very well. I think they uh, I think a lot of spy writers get a little lazy uh -huh. and just kind of assume, hey, you've read James Bond. This is the same kind of fair. We're going to have some wisecracking. We're going to have some uh, some uh, unbeatable uh, uh, protagonists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to have tons of henchmen we're going to throw in just so you can see how badass they are. Uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, there's a little bit of that. There's there's a henchman a plane that gets beat on. Oh yeah, uh, by a widow, but the, none of the wisecracking and whatnot. I, I think they, they definitely not wisecracking. They play her very seriously as a spy. Yeah. Um. So, like I said, the the first three issues here are kind of kind of different flavors of the week. Just to gloss over the first three, mm -hmm. uh, the first one's just a simple hit that goes down. And every one of these has, of course, that twist. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one's a simple hit that goes down. The second one, uh, she's trying to save a mobster's son. Or trying to rescue, I should say, a mobster's son. The third mm -hmm. one is a jailbreak. Mm -hmm. uh, out of those three, what did you say was your favorite story? Out of those three? Yeah. I can't say I, either of those three were my, my favorites. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> they, they all they all kind of read the same to me, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we, we can get into that. And then four through six is, uh, it actually carries a whole storyline through. There's mm -hmm. the embassy infiltration that goes wrong. It's not really much of a spoiler because the goes wrong happens on like the second page, mm -hmm. the second or third page. I, I will say I, I did enjoy the second half here with the more... The, the more the longer coherent storyline, linear type deal. Then, okay, yeah. then, uh, and then that's what what is the the eponymous, the finely woven thread. As you know, she goes, she digs deeper, she digs deeper, she finds there's another layer to this. There's, mm -hmm. there's more information. Um, and as a, as a Black Widow, threads are very important to her. Boots. So this this more is this more what uh, grabbed your fancy because. This is like a whole like start to finish. Well, I guess they're all kind of start to finish, just in a shorter right. format. Right. But this is just the one that that caught you better. The whole back half of this. The back movie. half of it, yeah, because just because it gave more room to breathe and to kind of explore the character a little more, get mm -hmm. a little more mm -hmm. dialogue in there, uh, and then and then have some have some uh, antagonists that were a little more developed, and you kind of have more of a more of a, a grip towards them. Actually, you know what? I will say of those of the first three, mm -hmm. if, if you want me to, to get one specifically, the one with the uh, the businessman where his brother was uh, coming to collect and try to oh, yeah, get his yeah, revenge. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah I, I think I like that most of all just because it put her in a position that she hadn't really been in with those first couple stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> because those first couple are, are just one-offs, do you think that they're more formulaic? Just because they, they follow a template of this is the mission, she starts her mission, something goes awry, she beats those odds, and then moves on. Yeah, it's very formulaic. Okay. Um, Would you contribute that to, to Nate Edmondson, the writer, just kind of getting his feet wet with the character and getting a feel for it? 
I don't honestly I don't know. I I, I wonder if if it's <clears throat> less the writers, I guess you could say I guess I could say fault than it is the character he was tasked to portray. Hmm. Uh, I, I have I've had limited exposure to Black Widow over the years. I've I've seen her in, pop up in books here and there. Uh, she made a huge uh, uh, huge splash on the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, <clears throat> and she was kind of that hard boiled, no nonsense. I'm gonna get this shit done. I'm a badass. Boom. Um, so I wonder how much of that actually kind of bled over into the depiction of her character in this one. Um, <clears throat> I get that she's a spy and she's got a lot of um, you know, the uh, assorted past and, and, and a history she's not exactly proud of. Yeah. <clears throat> but I kind of felt like they pushed that too much in this in this. You book. think so? Because I was going to ask you about that. Like, her yeah. whole reason for doing these missions is she gets paid handsomely mm-hmm. to take these missions. And she has her, you know, her lawyer slash handler, mm-hmm. I guess you would call him, who, you know, who finds out about these. And he's like, all right, these are your choices of missions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she picks one. Uh, the compensation that she gets generally goes towards families and victims of people that she's mowed down in the past mm-hmm. is is that how you you know, pretty decent explanation yeah, of that? yeah. And do you think they you are you saying that they lean too heavily on the whole red in my ledger type deal i think so because it, it starts early on like with by issue two I, I i'm already getting that okay i get it you you're this is you get a lot of guilt I was like, when did this turn into a Wolverine comic? <laughs> I was like, because because I, I started getting that way about Wolverine. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all right, yes, I know. I've got this 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 hitch, this past that I can't escape, and I'm, I'm trying to drink myself to death, but I can't because I have this healing factor. And all this uh, adamantium was shoved upon me. I was like, shit, man, just <laughs> you know, just give me a little a little bit more than that. All right, um, now do you think you're having those feelings because? You're reading this in the back to back to back to back trade. Do you think you would have those same issues if you're reading it month to month? Is that more of a uh, shoving sure. down their throats or more just a reminding the reader why she's doing it in a month to month? I honestly can't say because, like I say, it, it seems like those first three issues they seem like they were just, they were just repeats. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the the art. I'll, I'll say this to the art artist credit: the artwork is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I even gave this uh, let Jill. I mean, my daughter yeah, yeah, read yeah. this, and you know she thought it was cool. She loved the artwork. But yeah, the the story though, I just couldn't connect with. It's like you can pick, you can skip to any page on here, mm-hmm. just just any page, and then replace her dialogue with "I'm a badass," and it still works. <laughs> it still works. I mean, that's I, I can't really call, I can't call it lazy writing. It's just the maybe lazy character development because I, I ne- at no point, even when she's captured, even when she's held at gunpoint, I had no point feel that she's in danger or <clears throat> I need she's, I know she's gonna get out of it not just because it's her book yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's just I, I there's no there's no sense of that urgency or danger or I mean it's just it's just everything's kind of a walk in the park for her yeah and and she seems to be so fucking good at her at her job that there's no real tension that's that's what that's what kind of threw me out of it I mean the book is you know, technically great, but yeah, yeah. You know, the dialogue's eh, a little bit weak. A little, a little weak. Now, speaking of dialogue, there is one thing I thought interesting here. She says to a dude who's trying to trying to get vengeance mm-hmm. on on her for killing his brother. Right. Uh, he said, "You murdered him." To mm-hmm. which she responds, "Your brother was a murderer. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a, a killer. killer." Is there a difference? There is. What do you think the difference is between a murder and a killer? A murder, I think, uh, is more from. <clears throat> It might it might have more of a kind of a crime of passion, okay. Kind of kind of kind of bend to it. There's more emotional involvement. Uh, she's a con- she has a lot of detachment, and that's another thing that I kind of I, I kind of like about her, but also don't like at the same time. She, her emotional de- detachment mm-hmm. that makes her difficult to to really relate to. Yeah. Okay. Because she, I mean, Strange like, like I said, she. To her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like you can like like I said, you can you can. Change out all of her dialogue with "I'm a badass." Mm-hmm. And I do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the job done. Um, <clears throat> she's a cold-hearted bitch. Yeah. And I mean, and, you know that. I, I thought about: Am I being sexist? If if there was a guy portrayed in this way, would I feel the same way? And I thought back to when I read Grayson. Yeah. And that that that's that bit where he was he was essentially a double agent, mm-hmm. uh, and, and he was uh, doing his thing. And I was and I kind of felt the same way. I I just felt that <clears throat> they did not. They did not make full use of what her character could do. 
Okay. I think she was too constrained. All right, then. All right, then. Hmm. So uh, the question is, sir, would, uh, would go or no go? Would you would you no go on this? I would have to. I'd have to go a, a solid no go on it. I mean, a solid no go. The, 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 the visuals were great, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the yeah, story yeah. just didn't. It didn't pull me in. Huh? Yeah. Even even with the the religious uh, uh, fanaticism that was that comprised that last half. You know, I, yeah, I love yeah. me some religious fanaticism. Oh, yeah, that was all all <clears throat> book one of authority. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's just I just couldn't I couldn't get into it. Uh, I can appreciate why some would would like it. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I, maybe, maybe I'm just too much of an old soul. Maybe I maybe I'm maybe I'm played out of this whole spy network <laughs> stuff. No, yeah, maybe I'm too old for this shit. Let me really follow up <laughs> with that. Have you read any uh, Velvet? I haven't. I have not read Velvet. I don't think it's Image Comics is pretty much a, a badass spy female. That's, okay. that's why I'm asking if uh, it's, is, is it formulaic. No, because that that hmm. entire all three volumes tells one long story. Really? Uh, so that, yeah, it may be. So there you go. That's a little suggestion for your listeners. Right. If uh, and you're there, if uh, if Weirdo is in your thing, mm-hmm. um, maybe you're not a fan of the flavor of the week. These hashtag first where's few. Natasha? Hashtag where's the hashtag Natalia? If you're nasty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> then maybe check out uh, check out Velvet. Um, that'll give you a uh, an I think 15, 18 issues of mm. of an, a whole told out spy story. Mm-hmm. So it's a no go on your part, then. It's All a right. no go. We, 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 man, we, we got to have some no goes this time. Man, man. Starting I think, out early with the I think we might have to have like a little battle on this. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you are one hundred percent correct, sir. Uh, what what would be this battle, sir? Lay out the stakes of this battle. Um, I'm kind of feeling like if, if we have such badasses here, I, we 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 read this Batman versus Predator, but you know, spoiler alert: if you read this book, Batman really didn't take this fight on his own. He had a lot of help. There were a lot of people shooting at the predator. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of bullets, a lot of shocks, a lot of a lot of shit that happened to the predator before this became even close to an equal fight. <laughs> yes. Even at the end, where Batman was like, "He met the Batman." I was like, "You didn't really do that much, man. <laughs> you almost got killed twice. <laughs> you shouldn't be bra- He killed himself at the end. You shouldn't be bragging about this. Very true. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the stronger, more capable fighter. Okay. In this one, and 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 take my champion, the okay. Predator. Against against the widow. Huh? Against the widow. Predator against the widow. So, I think uh, what two it, bad asses. Too bad. Definitely. You got, you got an asses. undestructible killing machine and the predator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it comes down to like there's the age old Batman what kind of prep time you need I think uh-huh. that same thing would have to apply to <laughs> Natasha because okay. if it's just uh, you drop them both in an arena and they go at it well he's just gonna turn invisible and blow her the fuck up before she knows what's going on and so I don't know man that, she's 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 proven herself time and again to be held at gunpoint and to still get the you know get the upper hand that's true she that's fought true. a guy that had a gatling gun <laughs> and she was just in close pop, range pop, in close close range just popping away her little pistol shooter yep. and she he was not hitting her at all i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> i know i'm reading a comic book but come on well he does a big recoil on the gatling so you can't really you can't really aim it all that right well. Now, um, he, he can take out a, a school bus but with one solitary target exactly yeah, yeah. He, he wants a little more subtle for that right i think i have to go with the predator Really? I think if you drop these two in, I mean, he's, he's an alien for Christ's sake. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be. Why, why you gotta be racist? <laughs> specious, <laughs> I guess. Specious. It's specious. It's yeah. specious. Yeah. I have one hundred percent. No, no Martians. Uh-huh. No, no people from no Uranians. No mm. Venusians. Uh, stepping foot on my planet. All right, I'm building a wall around. You're building a wall around Earth. <laughs> around Earth. <laughs> it's a and, solid and, shell. Yeah, we're making uh, we're making Mars. Made it made out of tacos. Made, uh, well, that wall wouldn't last long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> barely get built. I think yeah. If between you drop them into a uh, into an arena, I would have to go with with Predator just based on overwhelming force alone. I mean. <laughs> She's usually rocking out some kind of guns, a knife, something like that. This dude's got yeah. a laser on his shoulder. You can't a beat a laser shoulder. You can if you blow up the laser. I mean, she's got pinpoint accuracy. She's got that sniper rifle. She does that. If they're in an arena, her. and I mean, she knows how to hide. She knows how to, you know, mask her presence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, she's got that. She's got the the the, the repelling rope. That's what's going to save the day. Well, the repelling man, rope. <laughs> I mean, you got. I mean, this dude fell off of like a twelve story building mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. and like landed on a cop car. I mean. He still kept going, but yeah, he can take a lot of damage. But let's just say mm-hmm. she managed to take 
you know, take the laser away from him. Take laser He's away. left with the blades Word. and the like the throwing scythe. Okay. And and maybe the spear. Okay. Maybe the spear. So that, that that's down to her guns or mini guns that she hold that she hides oh, yeah, in conspicuous places. Joints, the shocker joints uh-huh. too. So I am imagine she could maybe paralyze him, stun him. Mm-hmm. Um what else does she have? <clears throat> uh her I mean, good, knives. Her she always, she always has knives. Yeah. Has knives. I, I still gotta give it to the predator. I think yeah. It's still going to come down to sheer strength, mm-hmm. and Predator definitely has that. If, if Predator took Arnold down to the to the wire, right. uh, I think he's going to give Widow a run for her money. I think it's going to end up going Predator's way. Okay, so if, if we're going to go that route, then if Predator is just too much for the Black Widow it's to too handle, much, too much, I think. then Black Widow versus Batman. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Hand hand to hand combatants. Um, hey, because. <clears throat> one loves guns, on one way. hates guns. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, unless it's Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on uh, some widow runs, she has very small trace amounts of super soldier serum, mm-hmm. which allow her to be able to do things like roll with the Avengers and fight aliens without being the first person picked off. Right. Hawkeye, there's no explanation. Right. Um, so I think if you're going with the small <laughs> bit... <laughs> he, he knows when not to go into, into a yeah. fray. He's like, he has, he has those eyes. This isn't going to be advantageous for me. Let me just let me hang back, guys. Speaking of which, uh, we get a very quick Hawkeye cameo mm-hmm. in here. It's a nod to Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think it's somewhere in the early issues he falls off a building and lands onto a car. Mm-hmm. That's portrayed in this scene. So mm-hmm. they, they, they kind of tie in a little bit with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to give it to... The Bat. The Bat. I think, uh, this time, too? Yeah, I think... Because, uh, I mean, look, he's, he's covered all over. So I don't think the shock is going to do much. Because his suit's... In the movie, anyways, well, the, the, are, are the, rubber. The, so the, I mean, the, the pre-predator the sh- suit, the pre-predator. Okay, yeah. so really like that, like the Adam West Batman. Yeah, suit. Been, yeah. Whew, okay, then. All, I, all, I think she, all he has she, is balls she, in his words. He's, he, she stands a damn good chance then, because because in the the nowadays Batman suits, like mm-hmm. knives ain't penetrating, bullets ain't penetrating, right. the shockers ain't penetrating. Mm-hmm. But if you put them on a, a equal playing field, like the the Adam West Batman suit, I'm giving it to her. Okay, giving it to her. What about you? I would like to say if she went against the Predator, I think the Predator would, would win out. But mm-hmm. I think she could take this Batman. She could take this Batman. This Batman. Okay. <clears throat> this she... Batman is a good fighter. He's a good uh, strategist. But this Black Widow, she is like, like I say, she's an indestructible killing machine. She is an indestructible killing machine, and she continues to be indestructible throughout the rest of this story. Too. Yeah. So if you if you like your women unbeatable. Uh, if you like pick this, out Squirrel Girl because uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, from what I hear, is a very good title. It is. I actually have read quite a bit of that. All right, excellent. Just, uh, I recommend it. I think, I think that's it, sir. I think that's it. I is think that, that, that is it for the, for the bees All right. of the uh, the ABCs of TV bees, man. All right. So what, what do we? Uh, what, what's our preview for next week? I know I've got. Well, uh, for for next episode, I've got Chew on my on my list. You do, you do. You're doing a little bit of Chew action. Mm-hmm. I am bringing Copperhead. Copperhead. I'm looking forward to reading that. Yeah, a little bit of science fiction western for you. You didn't happen to bring that with you tonight, did you? You know, I thought about it when I was on the highway, and I was like, I probably should just brought it. Well, you know, it's okay, but but because I will share something with you. Just, I have not read that first volume of Chew. Oh, you haven't. Mm-hmm. You haven't. That's that's my brand. Uh, one reason I actually chose that one was so that I would have uh, a reason. To really get into it, I double checked my list when I was driving here. Uh, by the way, don't check your phone when you're driving. Mm. Uh, um, I think there's four or five titles on here that I have not read. So uh, it'll be it'll be an interesting journey that hopefully you readers take with us through the AP the ABCs of TPBs, and hopefully that you listeners can uh, can uh, search out your own trade paperbacks and find something that uh, that that you like. If it's not a recommendation that you've heard on this show, uh, just go out there and uh, pick something up. The wonderful thing about TPBs is that it's they they have self-contained stories. So you don't have to worry about that. Oh, I'm getting in the middle of this story arc. I don't know what's going on. It's all contained within. All contained within. Boom. Well, I think it's a good way to end it, sir. Yeah, let's do it. Until then, next time we will see you in a couple of weeks for the C's. Y'all take it easy.